Five, four, three, two. What up, what up, what up? Back for another episode of Ness XT, starring me, your boy True Hill Ness, here reviewing the January 15th episode of NXT, which was a great show from top to bottom. And without further ado, we're just going to get right into it. Uh, the show kicked off with Keith Lee coming out, cutting a promo on Undisputed Era. Things quickly turned for the worse for Keith Lee. When Undisputed Era came out and jumped him, you know, he was, you know, he was holding his own for the most part in the beginning, but the numbers game got too much, and Undisputed Era ended up, you know, taking him out, uh, targeting his leg, um, which would probably be a big predicament because next week he has to uh, face Roger Strong for the North American title, you know. But again, you know, Keith Lee, big strong boy. Big strong man, I'm sorry, because Tyler Bate is the big strong boy. Keith Lee is the big strong man. You know, but, you know, we're going to see how that plays out. Um, the opening segment was, it was all right. It's um, getting a little bit repetitive with the way things happen. You know, somebody cuts a promo on Undisputed Era. They come out, they either jump the person or, you know, whatever happens after the fact. But, uh, you know kind of is what it is, like, no, I'm not saying it's bad, it's just, you know, sticking to one formula, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to oversaturate it, keep doing the same thing over and over, it's, you know, going to lose its, its, its flavor, its fire after a while, but, you know, um, also, during this, um, opening segment, uh, pretty much after Keith Lee already got his ass kicked, uh, Tommaso Ciampa comes out to help. But, you know, the damage is already done. Like I said, they targeted his ankle, his leg, and it was a little bit late for that, you know. But that's neither here nor there. He came out, you know, I guess it's good that he came out, but it was a little too late. So, uh, but, yeah, I hope, like I said, over the second wasn't that bad. You know, they usually open up with a opening match, you know. It was alright to open up just with a nice little promo. You know, one of the bigger, the, the big stars right now, going into a big moment, a big match he has coming up next week. So, you know, it it was a nice little uh, change for once in the opening episode of NXT. But you know, now we're going to get into a match, and this opening match was the match of the night, superb match of the night. It was a Dusty Rhodes uh, Classic Tournament Tag Team Match. And we had the Bruiserweight, uh, or, or I should say, the team of the Broserweights, the Bruiserweight Pete Dunn teaming up with the bro Matt Riddle versus NXT UK's Flash Morgan Webster and Mark Andrews. And when I say this match stole the show, this match literally held NXT at gunpoint and took whatever it owned. Yeah, yeah, just like that, yeah, yeah. Like that analogy, I love it. But nah, this match was dope. It was great from top to bottom. Um, it was so great that uh, pretty much, uh, well, I guess not that great, that, you know, WWE star Baron Corbin was fucking watching uh, Dynamite, you know. But he should have been watching this match, fucking idiot. You over there giving your competition views when you should have been giving your company some views, fucking dumbass. Anywho, back to this match, man. When I say um, the match starts off with, like everybody getting into like a stalemate of countering, you know how like the Lucha Libre standoffs. I love those, regardless of you know how little or how much it goes on. The, the stalemate showing that both teams aren't going to uh, go into this match giving up without a fight and they're going to give it their all and they're pretty much equal when it starts off that everybody's going to be on their game. That's always great to open up a match. Um, uh, as the match goes on, it was just a lot of innovative tag team offense from the uh, strange team of Pete Dunne and... Uh, Matt Riddle, again, this team, makeshift tag team, you know, but that's the thing, a lot of, 
Like half of these Dusty Road Tag Team Classics have won, have been won by makeshift tag team. You know, Finn Balor and Samoa Joe and um, uh, uh, Ricochet and Aleister Black. You know, these guys aren't a conventional tag team, but they go out there and they look like they are a real tag team and have been tagging with each other for years. And that's exactly what happened with Pete Dunne and um, Matt Riddle. And that's not, not taking anything away from Flash Morgan Webster and Mark Andrews because these guys definitely fucking brought the fire. They brought, definitely brought the fight to Matt Riddle and Pete Dunne. Um, again, this match had a lot of hard-hitting, striking offense, a lot of high-flying, uh, a lot of high-flying offense from um, Mark Andrews and Flash Morgan Webster, like, these guys just, like, Flash Morgan Webster and Mark Andrews just had a crazy ladder match at NXT TakeOver Blackpool 2, and then they come on to uh, NXT and have another great back-to-back, -back, like, back-to-back -back great tag team matches, like, these guys are the unsung MVPs of the week, you know, they went out there, did their thing over there in the UK and they came to the States and put on an equally, if not even better, you know, because at least this wasn't even a gimmick match. This was just a regular tag team match and they still had that much intensity and had the crowd on their edge. Everything about this match was just amazing. I can't praise it enough. Like this definitely was match of the night. If you don't watch anything else, on NXT, this is the match that you need to go out of your way to see. I'm not capping, I'm not hyping this up for no reason. This match was great. Um, me, personally, the style that these guys wrestle, I'm a huge fan of. Um, the, there's like the quote unquote fighting spirit that you get from uh, like New Japan, or just J Japanese wrestling all together. I know a lot of people you know, don't like it, they say, oh, there's a lot of no-selling, and they sell, they just don't sell the way you want them to sell, like, they don't react to moves or have the psychology that you want, that doesn't mean that they don't have it at all in the match, it's just, you know, it's just not for you, but it's for other people, and I'm one of those people, so, again, this match was fucking dope, I can't praise it enough, um, the end of the match came from Pete Dunne, Hitting well, Pete Dunne and Matt Riddle hitting a uh, bitter end uh, bicycle knee combination, which was crazy. It was a lot of again, there was a lot of crazy double team moves in this match. Um, these guys, it was just amazing. Like I don't feel like honestly, I don't know how to, to explain it. This is how great the match was. Like I'm not gonna run down all these different spots and shit like that because it was, you know, I'd rather you go out, like I said in my NXT TakeOver Blackpool review, I'd rather you watch the match because if I'm just going to give you the match then, you know, what's the point of you watching? If I could run down these matches and just tell you what happens, but again, if I'm, like, I just want you to go out and watch the match if you haven't seen it yet, and if you have seen it, watch that shit again because I know you're going to love it again, like, that definitely was the match of the night. Kudos to all four men. But again, like um, the Broser Waits, Pete Dunn and um, Matt Riddle advance to the next round of the Dusty Rose uh, Classic. And you know, again, this they pretty much might be a dark horse. You know, again, this tournament is usually is half half has has been won by makeshift tag teams and you know they might continue the tradition and be able to win this match so who knows we'll see but definitely go out and check out that match if you haven't seen it yet you will not be disappointed so moving on next um segment on the card Tommaso Ciampa had a you know like a backstage video package promo on uh Undisputed Era and I'm sorry, it wasn't a backstage promo, it was in the ring. Um, Tommaso Ciampa comes out, you know, he cuts a promo on the studio, on the studio era, pretty much almost a remake or just a repeat of what happened with Keith Lee. Um, this time, Tommaso Ciampa had a better showing than Keith Lee, 
because out comes Johnny Gargano. We get a quick DIY reunion. You know, everybody's in their fields. And you say, oh, the DIY, they're back together again. As, as of right now, which makes sense, you know, Johnny and um, Johnny and uh, Tommaso, both their face, you know, they're both fighting against, uh, well, both fighting against, like, Undisputed Era. Finn Balor on the side, but, you know, Finn took a, took this week off. Um so, you know, it made sense for Johnny to come out and help uh, Tommaso Ciampa. Uh, he came out way quicker than Tommaso Ciampa came out to help Keith Lee. But, you know, he still came out. They still fended off Undisputed Era and did what they had to do. So, that segment was decent. Moving on to the next match on the card. This was another tag team match in the Dust Dusty Rose Tag Team Classic. We had NXT UK's... Grizzle Young Vets versus the Time Splitters, Alex Shelley and Kushida. Um, this was a solid match. Uh, no, to no fault of their own. Um, it was going to be hard to follow the tag team match that happened prior with uh, the Broser Waits and Flash Morgan Webster and uh, Mark Andrews. You know, like again, that match was just so high octane and uh, so action packed. Anything after it was going to look incomparable. But um, these guys had a solid match. Really can't say anything bad about it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, nothing nothing too crazy, you know. They both, both teams had their offense and both teams looked good. Um, I'm actually surprised at the finish. Um, NXT UK tag team, um, the Crystal Young Vets, Zach Gibson and James Drake. They won. I did not see that coming, which was a great, great, great surprise. Um, going into the whole Dusty Rose Classic Tag Team Tournament, everybody pretty much, everybody pretty much thought that the NXT UK Tag Teams were gonna be, you know, squashed. That it was just gonna be just the regular NXT brand tag teams moving to the next round. And the fact that, you know. The Grizzle Young Vets got this victory over Kushida and a debut on Alex Shelley really boost their momentum to the next round and for their next match. You know, again, who expected you know bringing in Alex Shelley? Usually, guys that come in or debut in their matches, big names, they don't lose their first match. But you know, that's neither here nor there. It's not a bad thing because. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to have something for Alex Shelley and Kushida down the road. But right now, the Grizzle Young Vets definitely needed this match. Again, they were in the latter match as well. And they came out and had another solid showing versus the Time Splitters. So, kudos to all the guys in this match. Um, at the end of the match, Zach Gibson and James Drake had their hands extended, hands of respect extended to them from Kushida and Alex Shelley. They wasn't fucking with that shit. They was like, nah, we ain't come over here to be shaking hands and doing all this sweet, soft shit. I'm coming over here to show you all we mean business. And, you know, getting that victory, that's exactly what they did. So, you know, congratulations on the Grizzly Young Vets picking up the victory and moving on to the next round of the Dusty Rhodes Classic. Next on the show, there was a backstage video package, promo, whatever the fuck you want to call it, for Robert Stone, the Robert Stone brand, and his newest, hottest client, uh, Chelsea Green. Uh, I'm reserving judgment on this whole thing. Uh, one good takeaway that I got from this is the role reversal. We're usually used to the female valet slash manager and the male wrestler. And now, you know, with the whole women's revolution and all that other shit that they're trying to do in uh, WWE, I commend them on actually having the male uh, valet and or manager, if you will, in this uh, scenario with the female talent. You know, we're so used to always seeing the females, you know, 
managing the males, you know, from from old school, Miss Elizabeth and Luna and uh, Bam Bam Bigelow or Luna and Goldust and um, what's her, Marlena and Goldust, you know. Sensational Sherry and Macho Man, Sensational Sherry and uh, HBK, you know, and then like even in recent years, you know, Lana and Rusev, or right now, Lana and Bobby Lashley, you know, that shit, um, you know, and then we got like uh, Zelina Vega with um, Andrade, so this is a unique and different. Uh, way to play out that type of uh, scenario far as manager and uh, client um, something different so you know I commend them on trying out but let's see we're going to see where it goes uh, again I'm going to reserve my judgment because I'm not too uh, familiar with Chelsea Green's in ring work um, going back to her being the hottest client on the Robert Stone brand, um, you know, I give her props for that, it's very nice to look at, you know, can't say much about that, but that's only going to get you so far with me, personally, and this is my show, so that's how I feel about it, you know, she can look as good as she want to fucking look, but if she sucks in the ring, you're going to hear from me, and I'm pretty sure that if you watch the show and keep up with, you know, how I judge talent, <coughs> Ooh, excuse me, I'm going to keep it all the way 100, you know, regardless of how, I don't give a fuck how she looks, you know, that's not what I'm here for, I'm here for in-ring ability, you know, and a character that can drive me to actually want to care about the individual that's on my TV screen, so, again, I'm not going to go too hard as of right now, we're going to see when it goes down the line, whenever she has her first match, I'm gonna. We're, that's when every, it's all gonna come out. So, again, right now, I am slightly intrigued again for the dynamics of the male uh, valet and the female talent. So, we're just gonna see where it goes from there. Moving on. Next was a. Uh, video backstage uh, video promo of Finn Balor discussing his upcoming match with NXT UK talent Ilya Dragunov that's going to be going on at um, NXT versus NXT UK World Collide event um, this is a match that I really didn't care to see and not in a bad way it's just like I didn't have the thought of seeing it, you know, um, after it being announced, then I'm like, all right, well, this is interesting, this is something that, you know, I feel as though this match is going to be a sleeper, um, first of all, the Worlds Collide event is stacked from top to bottom, and there's a lot of potential matches of the night on the card, but I think this one's going to fly under the radar and going to be a sleeper. Um, not too many people are talking about it, but that's like, that's the good thing, you know, is these guys are going to go out there and since there's not too much pressure on them far as, you know, it's not being a title match or, um, you know, advertised as much as the rest of the card may be, that's just going to work in their favor for them to go out there and show people that it should have had that much fanfare behind it. Uh, I feel as though NXT version of Finn Balor can, you know, go back to having great, good to great matches, not like the bullshit he was doing on uh, Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown. You know, these guys were pigeonholed into doing a whole, like not being able to wrestle to their full potential and then being in the NXT brand it's definitely, uh, they get a lot more leeway to have way better matches. So again, I'm looking forward to see that match coming up at the World's Collide event. And I believe it's going to be a potential match. It could be a potential match tonight. Definitely a show stealer. So be on the lookouts for that. 
Next on the card was a triple threat match for number one, or not number one, but for entry of the Fatal 4-Way match at, um, again, Worlds Collide for the NXT Cruiserweight Championship. Uh, Angel Garza will be defending his title uh, against, right now, uh, well, I'll get into it. Angel Garza will be defending his NXT Cruiserweight title in a Fatal 4-Way match. So, this episode of NXT, he had Leo Rush versus Isaiah Swerve Scott versus Tyler Breeze all fighting for in, uh, spot in this uh, Fatal 4-Way match at Worlds Collide. Um, this match was super action-packed, a lot of high-flying, a lot of striking, you know, pretty much the indie style of wrestling that I'm so much a fan of, or just, the, you know, the overall NXT style that, you know, fans love to see. They tune in each week, and these guys definitely didn't disappoint. Um, one one uh, point in the match, whew, whew, excuse me, one point in the match, uh, one thing that I like, Leo Rush was on the apron, you know, and it looks like, uh, Swerve was going to try to like hit him with some running offense. Leo does a backflip off the apron, lands on his feet, while Swerve does like a front flip over the top rope, lands on his feet. You know, they're just in an eye to eye stalemate face off. You know, that was pretty. That was pretty dope. But again, you know, everybody in this match played to their strengths. Uh, you know, we got. Isaiah Swerve Scott, super cool, super smooth, and just like everything he does is done to perfection, you know, he just like has that that coolness about him, you know, he doesn't do too much, and when he does, you know, when he does go, you know, full throttle in a match, you know, it, it just looks like it's effortless. Leo Rush, former NXT Cruiserweight Champion, you know, He's been having pretty much one of the best runs in NXT. In uh, yeah, NXT, you know, he shows up on 205 Live here and there. Uh, so he's definitely doing his thing uh, in this match, looking for a way back to get this Cruiserweight Championship. Uh, and then you got Tyler Breeze. You know, one of the OG NXT talents gets sent to the main roster. You know, he doesn't have the best run. All right, let's just say what it is. He gets up there, and it was shit. They had a shit run. You know, when he was a singles competitor, you know, put him with Tyler Bre uh, from Dango, Brizango, which I'm definitely a fan of that team. But they didn't do nothing with these guys either. So they ended up, he's back in NXT, which is so great. He can go back to having very good matches, being used prominently, because on the main roster, they didn't use them at all for like 80% of NXT call-ups. Unless you were like a huge indie name, you get up to the main roster and they don't know what the fuck to do with you. But again, this match had, you know, a hard-hitting, striking, high-flying offense. Every guy played off uh, well into their strengths in this match. So, um, the finish was Isaiah Swerve Scott picking up the win, hitting Tyler Breeze with the JML driver. Um, so now it will be uh, Angel Garza and uh, Isaiah Swerve Scott so far are announced for this fatal four way uh, for the NXT Cruiserweight Championship. I believe the last two entrants will be. Um, Individuals from, oh, excuse me, individuals, oh, oh. edit that out please, um, yeah, so, it's Isaiah Swerve Scott, and also, um, Angel Garza, in the Fatal 4-Way match so far, I believe the last two answers will be from NXT UK, you know, and, I believe this is going to be a very great match at Worlds Collide. Uh, Angel Garza, phenomenal talent. Isaiah Swerve Scott, another phenomenal talent. And uh, who knows who else we'll get at the end of uh, the, this week coming up, finding out who's going to be in this match. Um, 
So definitely on the lookout for this. I believe that these guys are going to go out there. Again, this card is stacked from top to bottom, and they're going to go out there and put on a hell of a match. And this is a potential uh, match of the night as well. So who knows? We're going to see where that goes. Um, moving on. Rhea Ripley cut a promo. Pretty much, uh, I forgot. Honestly, I'm not even gonna hold you. I forgot what the fuck she was talking about. Like, I don't know. She might have said something about Tony Storm and the, you know, her match with her at Worlds Collide. Since that's what this whole, pretty much every week is gonna lead up to Worlds Collide. So, sorry, Rhea Ripley, but I don't, I don't remember what you said. It probably wasn't even that big of a deal anyway. So. The main event was a battle royal for number one contendership for the NXT Women's Championship and a chance to face NXT Women's Champion Rhea Ripley at NXT TakeOver Portland. So, you know, this, first of all, kudos to the ladies for main event in NXT. Um, this match was filled with, you know, the top talent, top female talent. And NXT, you know, we had Candice LeRae, Io Shirai, um, Bianca Belair, uh, former NXT Women's Champion Shayna Baszler, and a debuting Mercedes Martinez. If you are not familiar with Mercedes Martinez, you need to do your research. She is the real deal. She is legit. One of the best female competitors, if not in the WWE now, just in the world completely, you know, I know she's been wanting to get there for quite some time, and what better way to introduce her and be able to part of a brand than be a part of NXT, where she can actually go out there and have matches that, you know, put her at her full potential, you know, instead of just going on the main roster having those bullshit, those you know, all that dumb shit that they do up there, but, you know, honestly, I don't really have much to say about this match, not that it was bad, but it was a fucking battle royal, what else am I supposed to say, people got eliminated, you know, all the ladies had a great showing, it was, I forgot how many of them there was, but they all, you know, came out, did their thing, and the final two that it came down to was Io Shirai and Bianca Belair, uh, Either the last episode or the episode before that, um, yeah, it was actually the last episode, I believe, uh, I touched on how the Io Shirai and Bianca Belair was going to play out into the future. Negro Domus, I'm just saying. Yeah, so, you know, how their match ended the triple, the, the six women's tag match where, you know, Io Shirai hit a drop kick on... Uh, Bianca Belair, you know, after a few miscues during the match, uh, so that was the way that Rhea Ripley pinned. Um, yeah, Rhea Ripley hit the rip tie on Bianca Belair that night. You know, picked up the win for her team, team of herself, Candice LeRae and Tony Storm. So it was just like a nice bit of storytelling that the last two people in this match was Io Shirai and Bianca Belair, you know, because they kept playing off on the friction that these two individuals have had since uh, the last match that they were in. Um, again, uh, Bianca Belair picked up the win. She's now going on to face NXT Women's Champion, uh, I'm sorry, Rhea Ripley at... Uh, NXT TakeOver Portland. Um, overall, I think that there are, you know, I'm, I'm, I can't say it was really bad. These are phenomenal talents, phenomenal female talents. Uh, I know people might not want to see Bianca Belair face Rhea Ripley. But, you know, Rhea, for one, Rhea just got the title. I doubt, I highly doubt she's going to drop it anytime soon, you know. Um... She gets to go out there with another amazing athlete and just another amazing performer and Bianca Belair potentially having another, uh, that's another potential match of the night because, you know, the ladies can do it just as well as the men. You know, we don't, we're not biased or sexist over here. Whatever 
they can do. Whatever we can do, they can do. Some can do it better, you know. It's all in the talent. And these are two extremely talented females. And uh, I believe that, I again, I don't think Rhea Ripley is going to drop the title to Bianca Belair. But, you know, nice little filler, quote-unquote, feud, quote, um, filler match. So to keep Rhea Ripley busy and to give a highlight of, again, one of the best, if not, yeah, one of the best, um, women on the NXT uh, roster, you know, so we'll see how that plays out. Uh, overall, that was the end. Yeah, that's that's XT. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Another special match that was made for the uh, World's Collide event. Uh, we had Mustache Mountain, the team of Tyler Bate and Trent Seven, issue a challenge. To DIY, Tommaso Ciampa, and Johnny Gargano. Again, that's another. That's what I'm telling you guys. You want to definitely tune in for the World's Collide event. Like this star, this show pretty much has a card full of main events as like regular matches. You know, everything on this card looks very, very, very good. And uh, again. With Mustache Mountain issuing a challenge to DIY, you know, for first time ever, that is match of the night. You know, on paper, that's match of the night credentials. You know, all the talent that's uh, involved, these guys can go out there again and have a bang up type of match. I'm definitely gonna be there for it. Well, as far as watching, I'm not actually gonna be there for it, but. Nonetheless, I'm going to be hyped. It has me hyped. The whole event has me hyped, to be honest. So, all in all, this was Ness XT. If you would be so kind to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and, you know, leave your thoughts in the comments. And if you agree with some of the things I say, maybe you don't agree with some of the things I say. Who knows? This is your chance to go out, uh, go on our YouTube channel and leave your thoughts. You know. Uh, also, uh, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget to like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at True Hill Heat. Also follow us on Instagram at True Hill Heat. And if you're in the wrestling groups, join the True Hills. Uh, Facebook group, you know, come talk to us, let's chop, chop it up, bust it up, you know, have a little fun, a little internet fun, <laughs> so, this was Ness XT, star of me, your boy True Hill Ness, and we'll be back next week.